This one's fly is the Skykomish Sunrise, named after the Skykomish River in northwest Washington State, actually in King County, just outside of Seattle. Rapid white water, beautiful river. In 1938, George McLeod and his brother Ken were fishing on the river, and Ken said to George, tie me a fly that looks like the sunrise over this river. And what they ended up with was the Skykomish Sunrise, a fly that's taken steelhead to 30 pounds or more. This is a beautiful fly tied on a double low water salmon fly hook. The traditional tie is tied on a single uh, up eye salmon hook and there's a number of small variations but what they all have in common is they're going to have an orange or red and yellow tail, a mixed orange or red and yellow hackle, a bushy thick red body typically chenille and a white wing which on the traditional fly was made out of polar bear hair which of course is uh, impossible to get today and uh, um, a, a protected uh, species so we're going to use calf tail as a substitute and it makes a beautiful uh, action in the water I like to use these double hooks in fact the one that we're using today is a brand new partridge Salar this is a silver double hook designed for uh, sea trout and salmon and the reason that I like that is for this reason when you're using a double hook like this it will always float in the water upright with a wing like that. It won't rock. It'll always sit straight up and down and it'll also give you some weight so that it'll sink. Now naturally we're not going to be fishing a steelhead fly in Ohio, in southwest Ohio, uh, for steelhead because we don't have any, but this is a fantastic fly to use for stripers and white bass. Let's go ahead and tie one. I'm going to use the new Partridge of Redditch Salar. This is a size 7 CS142 double uh, salmon hook. You can use any up eye salmon hook or in fact you can use any streamer hook you want because this is uh, really just a little bucktail pattern very similar I think in a lot of ways to a Mickey fin but a little bit fancier. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put that really pretty beautiful hook uh, in, our, in our vise and with a double hook like that you've got to angle the vise away from you so a rotary vise does make things a little bit easier. We're going to use a red thread this is 140 denier or a 6 aught thread Start the thread at the front and go ahead and, and lay down a nice even body to a point right above the point of that hook and clip off that. Now we need to put in the tail and the tail consists of orange and yellow hackle and we're going to layer the tail but when we actually turn the hackle collar we're going to mix them and I'll show you how to do that. For the orange tail I'm going to strip some fibers off of the hackle and I'm going to measure those fibers so they're about as long as the body, a little bit less long than the body. Clip off the unused ends. We're going to tie that in with just a couple of thread wraps. So a little wisp of an orange tail. Now we're going to take the same thing from yellow. We're going to strip off some of the yellow. And the same idea. What we're going to do is we're going to measure that so it's about the same length. What I've done so I've just layered the two so the yellow is on top. Think of a sunrise. It starts as orange and it builds up to a brilliant yellow and then to a, a, a blinding white. And that's kind of what we want to do here. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to tie in the ribbing. There's silver tinsel. On the original, there was a silver tag below the tail, but on the double hook, we really don't have room for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of a silver hammered tinsel to give myself some flash here. I'm going to build a nice thread body. Now what I like to do, instead of using the chenille on this, I want to actually use a dubbed body because I think that gives a little bit more spark, a little more translucence, and plus it's just kind of fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wax the thread, a little bit of the soft wax, and what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a Spirit River uh, Bright Blend. This is a uh, an artificial seal substitute. Really bright red. It's very flashy. It's got a lot of uh, long fibers in it. You can see this has got a lot of long fibers in it. What I want to do is I want to take this dubbing, take the amount that I'm going to use for my body. You can watch right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut those fibers about in half. The reason I'm going to do that is that otherwise it'd be too long and it would make a very tight rope. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that cut fibers loosely attach it to that wax thread you want to start by spinning that a little bit you don't want to get a really tight rope on there, you don't want to have a real tight chenille, you want to have it kind of bushy and loose and I'm 
want to dub a nice big fat body right up to the front. You see how it used all of that dubbing? It looked like I had a lot of dubbing there, but it gave me a nice fluffy buggy kind of a body. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my silver tinsel and just a few wraps just to add a little bit of sparkle there. This is an attractor pattern. It doesn't really imitate anything but very very pretty pattern with that double hook it's great for fast moving water this would be an awesome fly to use on the uh, winter and spring white bass fishery down on the Ohio River now the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and tie in our wing I'm going to use calf tail calf tail is usually very very crinkled and very um, uh, curved and wavy so what you want to do is when you're buying this you want to make sure that you're looking for calf tail that's really got some good straight fibers uh, once you found a good quality calf tail, uh, buy as many of them as you can because it's really hard to find decent ones and they're very inexpensive. And this is a great material to use on small bucktail style flies. You want to clip out a relatively uh, wispy wing. You don't want it to be real, real heavy. And keep in mind, these flies in the Pacific West Coast are fished in very heavy water, so the wing is usually cocked up to give you a lot of action. That's one of the reasons for that body, it cocks that up. But what we want to do is we want the edge of the wing to come no farther than the edge of the tail. And capture that in with a gathering wrap and two or three tight wraps to get that wing in there. Now, calf tail, you want to make sure that you're using small amounts because it is very, very slippery. And adding a little bit of glue will make a lot more of a, um, a durable of a fly here for you. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to put in my hackle. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to use a yellow and orange hackles. And I've selected two saddle hackles. And I'm going to measure them both for length. Strip away the bottom material and cut that. Now I'm going to tie both hackles in simultaneously, yellow and orange, bring my thread up to the front, making some tight thread wraps. Now, holding up the hackle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull away these hackle fibers so they're all facing up in one direction, so that way I can have a good swept hackle for a wet fly. Make one. two turns of that hackle. That's a fairly heavily hackled fly right there. Go ahead and tie down that end of those hackle tips. Cut those out. Now form a neat small thread head. Go ahead and add your whip finish. And what we have is a pretty little uh, steelhead fly, a fly that's actually responsible for a 30-pound Kispiox River steelhead, which at the time was a fly rod world record. Uh, colorful fly, sinks quick, tracks true, uh, easy to tie, and it's something you don't normally see in the Midwest. And sometimes when you can show fish something they haven't seen, you can have a little bit better of a day. Why don't you give it a try? It's a great winter and spring pattern.